I recognize that I am in that confusion, split energy space. That's all right. And uh, molding things into place. Yes. Yeah. So how can I get better at calibrating? By caring about how you feel, by understanding that how you feel is about your alignment and that's what matters. And why does your alignment matter? Because your inner being is holding the bag of your requests. So you want to align with that, with your inner being, with that power, with that clarity that life has already helped you to sort out and decide about. By caring about how you feel enough to try to feel a little better rather than defend where you are. It really is as simple as giving up needing to be right and deciding that you want to really be in alignment with everything that is right, that is love, that is what you've been asking for. Just catching it as you go, as best you can. Do you think there's something in my vibration that keeps me from allowing that? Yeah. Yeah. It's beliefs that aren't working for you. A belief is just a thought you keep thinking and a thought is a vibration. If there are things that you want that aren't flowing easily, then there is a reason for it, for sure. And if you don't feel mostly really good most of the time, then there is a reason for it. You're early into this. And so it really is a matter of massaging your thoughts until they feel better. It's not easy. We really want to give you all a lot of credit because you're here in a manifested world where you can see and hear and smell and taste and touch this thing that is reality. It is real. It's manifested where all of your physical senses are deciphering it. What you see with your eyes is a interpretation of vibration. In other words, it's all interpretation of vibration, but it's like real stuff that you're observing. And so of course you're going to have reactions to what you observe. But the question that you next want to ask is, is this reaction something that I want to continue to perpetuate? Because if it is, keep watching that television program, keep having those same conversations. Don't change anything if you like the way you feel about it. But if you don't like the way you feel about it, then try to find ways to feel better about that. And see, that clashes with a whole bunch of, but I'm right about this. Well, we've been playful about this. We say, make a big sign, carry it with you everywhere you go, or post it online. These are the things that I need from you, world. If I should run into you, look at my face. If I run into you, I'm gonna need these things from you in order to feel good. So listen up. Listen up, pay attention to the sign. And of course, that's ridiculous because you can't cover that much ground and nobody's looking at your sign anyway. Or you could deal with your own bag of marbles so that as you're moving through this world where everyone's free to create the reality that they're creating, the law of attraction isn't matching up with stuff that you don't want. And here's the thing. Sometimes people will say to us, especially when they're new to this, they'll say, this is hard for me to accept because I don't think I've really been thinking those thoughts. I wouldn't have created that because I didn't want that. And then we say, we didn't say you wanted it, but we did say you attracted it. You attracted it by giving attention to it. And so it's not easy to give up the noticing, the complaining, the justifying, the defending, the trying to get other people to see your point of view. It's not easy to give it up, but once you start playing with this just a little bit and you notice that we've been telling a story for a long time and those of you who've been listening to us have heard this, but it's a really good example. Years ago when Esther had more time and was doing telephone consultations, Abraham talking to people on the phone, we are visiting with a woman who was new to the idea of this. She really wanted us to just get out a crystal ball and tell her what was coming. She wasn't really looking for encouragement about what she could do to improve her point of attraction. So she wasn't really a good match to what we teach, but she was determined to get some answers from us. And so finally, toward the end of the 30 minutes, we said to her, well, let's take just a minute and let's talk about blue glass. And she said, why? We said, just stay with us. Let's just focus on blue glass for a little while. Think about all the different textures and colors of blue and depths of color, some glass is clear, some of it you can't see through at all. 
Well, she wasn't enjoying the conversation at all, but we hung in there for a little over a minute with her. And then we said, all right, then let's talk about butterflies. Well, she was no happier than over the blue glass, but we described different kinds of butterflies, what they look like, big ones, small ones, for a, about a minute. And then she's apparently irritated. And we said, one more thing, let's talk about feathers, different birds, different kinds of feathers, different colors of feathers. And she wasn't having any of it, but we were wanting to explain that by activating subjects, it activates a point of attraction within you. And then the law of attraction will show you the evidence of that attraction. But she hung up and Esther doesn't really remember like you're remembering what's happening here. And Jerry wasn't in the room. And so they were in San Diego in La Jolla and they went off to have lunch. They're going to George's restaurant. They parked at the big pink hotel and the valet parker took their car and they got out of the car and they're headed for George's and Jerry's really hungry and he's got hold of Esther's hand and Esther sees a shop and drags Jerry into it. Now, that in and of itself is not unusual. But what was unusual on the back wall was a wall of blue glass, ceiling to floor, all kinds of blue glass. Well. They weren't interested in it, but it was amazing. And off they went and they had lunch and then they walked down to the cove and there's a big stretch of beautiful lawn before you get to the rocks and to the shoreline. And as they were walking across this big stretch of grass, a flurry of butterflies surrounded them that was so intense that for a little while, they just put their heads down and stopped talking to keep from eating butterflies. There were that many butterflies. And then the butterflies passed and Jerry said look at that little boy he's coming to us to you and he came running up to Esther and handed her a feather that he'd picked up off the ground and then it hit Esther that less than two hours from those thoughts having been activated in Esther's vibration and in the woman's too the law of attraction had managed to bring them all to Esther in such vivid fashion that it was just weird and powerful and so play games like that identify things that you don't have strong resistance about that was the point of blue glass nobody has negative emotion against blue glass you're not usually pushing against butterflies unless you've eaten too many find something and activate it and then watch what happens next it's happening to you all the time if you were making lists of the things that you just softly thought about that you weren't worried about and then you notice how much it's showing up detail after detail after detail the law of attraction is so capable and accurate and responsive to your vibrations on so many levels of your being and so as you know that and do something deliberate about that then in time you can ask for whatever you want you reach the point where it's actually easier to start with something that you don't have at all and attract it than it is to attract something that you've been wanting to attract that you've been expecting not to attract for a while you just have to figure out where you are on the sliding scale how strong is the desire and how strong is the resistance if the desire is really really strong this is a little side note that we're going to give you carefully if your desire is strong enough it almost doesn't matter what you believe because your desire will bring you what you want we just don't think you should have to struggle and suffer so much to get it your life is helping you to know what you want you don't have to work at that step one ask that comes easily step two source is answering because your inner being is focused upon what you've asked for with an undivided point of focus so it's given it becomes the vibrational seeds of everything that you're asking for instantaneously your part is part three where you have to find a way to no longer resist what it is which means by stop taking score of what is by looking to where you're going rather than to where you are it's like if you got into your automobile it's a fortunate thing that your windshield isn't in the floorboard how'd that be to drive down the road just looking right where you are 
It's ridiculous, we know, but that's how a lot of you are living life. You don't look up, you don't look out, you don't look over. You're just looking at what is and looking at what is and talking about what is and complaining about what is and worrying about what is and recreating what is. People say, I thought you said I can't stand still. We say, you're not standing still. You're just bringing it back again and again and again and again and again. Different places, different faces, different neighbors, different walls, different things that you're worried about getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because you haven't shifted the way you feel. Got to find a way to shift the way you feel. And so we said earlier to someone, you can't get there from there. And we want to clarify that. We're not talking about you can't get from that place to that place or from that economic situation to that economic situation or from that physical diagnosis to that physical diagnosis we're not saying you can't get from the manifestation to the manifestation we're saying you can't get to the manifestation that you choose from the emotion that doesn't match it you've got to find the emotion that matches what you want it's like the gas gauge on your car it's showing empty and you don't put a happy face sticker over it because you can't bear to look at it. You understand it's helpful and you go get some fuel. So it's the same thing. When you feel negative emotion, don't put a happy face sticker over it. Don't pretend that it's otherwise and don't try to get other people to agree with you. Instead, do something about the way you feel about that. And when the way you feel shifts, you'll let the stuff in that you're asking for no matter what the subject is. Clear enough? How? Sometimes I feel like I struggle with that emotion part. But think what you just did. You just did the opposite of what we encouraged. <laughs> and it's all right because you're facing reality. But I struggle with that. I struggle with that. We know you do. And we don't want you to struggle. We want you to find ease. But when you're telling it like it is and telling it like it is and telling it like it is. And we know why you do that. There are people all around you demanding that you tell it like it is. It's like you've got to face reality. What's wrong with you? You got your head in the clouds. What's wrong with you? Well, don't try to explain this to them, but you think to yourself, it's not that there's something wrong with me. It's that I'm now understanding why I've been standing in a similar place for so long. Because I keep noticing this and talking about this and fussing over this and taking action. Do you know, we love you so much. Most people offer most of their action to try to compensate for vibration they haven't shifted. It's futile. No wonder it feels like a struggle. If you haven't shifted the way you feel, there's not enough action in the world to really get it the way you want it to be. Boyfriends come and go and come and go and come and go. Why do they always leave me? Why do they always leave me? Why don't they stay? There's a reason. How come I don't get paid as much as the other people at my job? How come? I'm better at it. I'm more dedicated. I'm more deserving. Why doesn't it change for me? 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 You should see your vortex version. It changed every time you complained. It got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And you know why you got onrier and onrier and onrier and onrier? Because it changed, but you didn't. You got to find ways to let it in. And the clue is you feel relief when you stop pulling against it so we're not encouraging you to smile more that's the happy face sticker or to use better sounding words we're asking you to find a way to feel better about it or don't think about it now you can want all kinds of things and if you're not thinking in opposition to those things they'll come that's why we teach meditation it's easier we love you so much it's easier to teach you to have no thought than to have pure positive thought. Because the law of attraction is dishing back up to you what you usually think about that. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next